So what do we want to prevent basically a malunion later on deformity and sometimes stiffness very rarely when treated conservatively in huge swelling you may get a compartment. So we want to prevent all those that's the reason for your intervention. So general indications are here uh, I think it has already been spoken uh, by Dr. Ashok. So important thing here is if you have a pale hand it's an emergent situation if you have a pink pulseless hand gross swelling it's an urgent situation. So we have to have a good physical examination, look for the open wounds, look for pucker sign, check for all the three nerves and if they are able to show okay, thumbs up and show, give you high five and then cut like scissors, all the nerves should be intact and if they are not intact, look on the uh, lower side, the left hand side, the fingers are little whitish, they are not as good circulation as the right hand side, so pay attention to even the smaller details and you can also measure a waveform and pulse oximeter. So our goal is to get a stable anatomical reduction and minimize the complications overall. So how do we do that? This is the OT setup. Left side is the side which is being operated. The monitor was in the right side. So the CR moves like this. And morning we had a discussion. Premal sir told that CR can come from the other side for uh, AP and lateral. So there are three ways of uh, pinning and draping. So I'll talk about extension type fracture. It can be done in supine or in prone. So one way to do is freehand draping like what we did in the morning and the other way is to do it in prone and you can use an arm board with a, a folded towel or sheet so that you can pin them easily. This is a technique uh, uh, taught to us by Dr. Uh, Sandeep. So he uses that wooden plank, stabilizes the proximal fragment and then distal you can manipulate uh, without much uh, need of traction and assistance. So he is milking it and then aligning it gradually. So this is the video, um, basically there are images and I'll talk about it. Note the fracture pattern, note the comminution, note the line obliquity before you see direction of displacement and once you're okay then you plan traction in about 20 to 30 degree flexion and you correct the sagittal plane start flexing the elbow and you can put pressure over the olecranon so that you also get uh, sagittal plane correction and that's the shoot through view which we see. Generally our tendency is to external rotate. In stable fracture it will stay there but this maneuver in case of instability or shear where there is an oblique fracture can displace the fracture. So it's better to take a AP and lateral both uh, by moving the C arm and uh, once you are done with that, I generally put a tape and then our assistant is holding it in a flexed position and the position of the forearm would be depending upon the direction of displacement. So if it's posterior medial, you close the gap by pronating, if it's posterior lateral, you close the gap by supinating. So remember thumb in the direction of displacement. So then we get proper views, AP and lateral. If you are happy with that correction, you start your pinning. Start with the lateral pin, see that in the humerus all the three columns, at least two columns get good purchase and uh, I go by feel proximally without drilling and then you feel the far cortex while you are drilling. If you are happy with two pins, you can uh, do that, otherwise you can add an additional pin if you think it is unstable. I move the elbow, range of motion and see, sometimes you get this pucker sign and uh, that can be uh, dealt by milking the anterior muscles there, brachialis, everything can be dislodged and sometimes you get a pop also and then the fracture reduces. And then post reduction you uh, put them in a which is in less than 90 degree of flexion. So what do we look at? Finally at the end of reduction there should be no step, moment angle is normal teardrop appears normal, no fracture gap anteriorly and anterior humeral line cuts where you want it and that's the continuity. So this is an example of oblique uh, fracture but if you see the post-op x-ray it's you can't know which wire is going where. So you need not be so this thing. So there is a proper technique to wire them. So these are a few pinning rules. At least two wires of appropriate size should be used. Purchase near and far cortex minimum. Purchase at least two columns among the in the distal humerus. 
and then spread or diverge the wires to get the maximum purchase. So this is an example of divergent pinning. Another example of parallel pinning and you can add one more if you feel it is unstable. When do we need a medial pin? When there is a medial oblique fracture, when there is a high supracondylar or else a medial or lateral combination and a virus collapse where you need to correct it. So when we are doing medial pinning, follow these rules. Pin always in elbow extension. Push the ulnar nerve manually with the thumb. Use a small stab incision if you are in doubt. Use a hemostat to spread it out. And uh, start on the oscillating or a rim mode when you are doing that drilling. You can use a sleeve also. Some people use a drill sleeve. And I use a smaller pin when doing that uh, without opening. So we get a flexion type uh, fracture also, which is rare, but it's important because they are highly unstable and a high rate of open reduction is there. So there are techniques described for reduction. This uses a towel as a fulcrum and you push, pull the proximal fragment, push the distal fragment, get it reduced and pin it. But taking AP view is sometimes difficult, I feel, in this uh, scenario. And AO has described a technique where manually you push the uh, distal fragment from anterior and index finger from the posterior through the proximal fragment and reduce it. So this is an example. Distal uh, fragment is mal rotated. There is ulnar nerve palsy. I did all close reduction technique. Nothing happened. So I had to open it. You can see the air orthogram like that there. And then got it reduced and then pinned it. So that's the end result. So. The slides have moved too much. So this is another example of a transverse fracture, kind of oblique. But if you see, it's going in flexion and extension as well. So it was highly unstable. So we used a joystick technique through the distal fragment. I know you'll all criticize me at the end of this, that there is something, but uh, I'll show you again. So this is the end close reduction, what we got. But there is cubitus virus there, and probably if that olecranon pin could have been maneuvered before pinning the medial side and the lateral side, we would have got a better result. 